Hallelujah. Oh, glory. <clears throat> Jesus has been healing in Matthew chapter number 12. I preached to you last week about that he said, if you'd have learned what this means, you knew what this means. I will have mercy and not judgment. Y'all remember that? Amen. And here's these same old Pharisees and all that. <laughs> and they, the Pharisees held counsel to destroy him. And he, and he leaves out from there. And he, after verse 7, if you had known what this means, and I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. And he charged them that they should not make him known. Verse 16, verse 17 of chapter 12 of Matthew. Amen. Uh, ch 12, chapter 12 and 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoke in flax he will not quench. Oh, hallelujah. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoke in flax he will not quench quench. Amen. Brother Jeremiah, stand up and ask God to anoint the preaching of his word tonight. Oh, glory. I've read this passage many, many a time, but I had never understood what, what a commentator said that this mean. It never made sense to me. A bruised reed he wouldn't break. You know, what's a bruised reed got to do with anything? Or what, you know, why wouldn't someone break a bruised reed? Or why would somebody break a bruised reed? And I never fully understood that until just this week in my studies, I found that what this referred to was a musical instrument made from a piece of reed. And so the shepherds would be out in the field uh, taking care of their sheep. And as you can imagine, they had many an hour to do nothing. And many of you know David was known as the great psalmist. He learned many of those chords and much of that music out there taking care of the shepherd, the sheep. So they would take a hollow reed and would do, make something similar to what we would call like a flute, from what I can understand, maybe drill some holes in it and make music. You can make music out of anything that's hollow. You can make music out of whistling across the top of a bottle. But they would take those reeds and make themselves a crude sort of a flute and blow across it, but it was just a piece of grass, and it was easily damaged. It was just a reed. It was not, Brother Eddie, a something that was meant to be permanent. And... But, but those shepherds would make music out of that reed, and then later on, amen, uh, but if it got broken, they would try to repair it because of the time that it took to make that thing and find a good reed and to make that, brother Johnny, they would try to repair that reed. Uh, but if after a while, if it was just, 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 you know, I can't make it, it collapsed or it just caved in or it dry rotted, it just went down and got crushed underfoot. And when, 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 when I read that, amen, I didn't fully understand what that meant until I began to see what he was saying. A bruised reed, he's not going to break, but he's going to repair it. Amen. And even though it's just a disposable piece of grass to him, it's just a, something that's just been plucked out of nothing and made out of nothing. Amen. He's going to try to, he's so gentle and such a savior of restoration that a bruised reed, he will not break. Before I give you my title, I, I, just recently I, I have been watching a guy that does some pretty interesting things. But there's a guy that likes to, uh, likes to go buy old cars that ain't ran in years. 
And his whole motto is, will it drive? Will it make it home? Can we make this thing run? It ain't ran in 30 years. It's been sitting in the bushes for 30 years. And he'll pour gas. I'm sure, brother, brother, uh, mu- uh, mechanics here like that kind of stuff. Brother Isaac's looking at me smiling. And that's his kind of thing. There's, he loves nothing more. It started with vacuums when he was a kid, trying to work on old vacuums. And Brother Rob said, we had vacuums everywhere. Well, worked out good. He's an airplane mechanic now, from vacuums to airplanes. I hope he does better on the planes. Amen. Brother Rob said we had vacuums everywhere because he collected them and tried to get them to run. He still loves to do that stuff. Matter of fact, he's fixing to figure out how to get one of them LED signs back to life at our new thrift store that's dead that we're allowed to use. I paid $30,000 for it and it still don't work. But I can just see Brother Isaac right up in the heart of it, tearing it apart. And if he don't know how to fix it, he'll never admit it. He'll just make up something, but that's okay. Now, moving along. But, but, but he, they, they like to, to try to get these old cars back to life and get them. But recently, Lake Mead has downed 30 and 40, 50 feet out in, out in the Utah, I believe it is. And that, that, there, that for, for the first time in 50 years, there has, there, it's down. They're seeing stuff. They found multiple bodies in barrels. It is a true thing that they'll stick you in a barrel and throw you over the, the mafia, throw you in the lake. They found skeletons in barrels, about five bodies, I think, in that lake since it's went down about 50 feet. It's unbelievable. They've had to extend the docks and stuff where the concrete just ended in mud and extend it so they can still enjoy the water and all those things. About a year and a half ago, an old yellow boat uh, 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 um, out there was found, a speedboat was found sitting on the bottom for what would have been 40 to 45 feet underwater. These old boys found that thing. There's people started posting pictures of it. There's guys that go out there and they'll post pictures of lakes down. This is what's this has appeared and that's appeared. And again, they appear pictures of barrels that end up having bodies in them later, you know, skeletons. And, and, and now this boat for a year and a half, it's set there on the bottom of the lake. Some old mechanics decided one day, well, just for fun, we're going to go get this boat about uh, two or three months ago. We're going to get this boat off the bottom of the water. We're going to pick it up, and we're, gonna just, we're just going to clean the lake up, and we'll just have fun, and we'll make a video of it, see if we can get some views put on YouTube. They drug that boat out of the lake. When they got there, they realized that that boat had probably been underwater for 30 years due to the decals that were on it. After they got it on a trailer, they was amazed that the fiberglass was in such great shape. Even the seats were in such great shape. And the first thing they'd done was they pulled that motor out of that boat that had literally been underwater for 30 years, and then after being underwater for 30 years, had been sitting on that dry lake bed for a year and a half. And, and I will confess to you, I watched a video of it to see if it would run again, okay? So if that's a sin, Lord, forgive me, okay? <laughs> But I, I, I was intrigued by this. I was just reading the news one day, and it told about these guys pulling this boat up. And I watched it on my cell phone. Lord, forgive me. They, you watched it too, Brother James? All right. So me and, you, me and you both going down if it's bad, all right? But they took that thing, Brother James seen it, and they cranked that engine. They took it all apart, and they was amazed at how there was no rust inside of it. And they theorized that the pressure of being that deep maybe wouldn't let the water in and what this and that and the other. Make a long story short, they put a starter on that engine sitting out there on the ground, tore it apart, cleaned it up, put it all back together, 100% original, and that crazy boat motor fired up after 30 years plus at the bottom of the lake. So then they went a little farther. And they put the motor back in the boat, and they said, will it float? And they, read, they had the seats redone. And they took that original motor and that original boat and put it back in the water. And sure enough, that boat ran and flew out across that lake again for the first time in 30-plus years. Then they was very intrigued because when they took it out, they realized the boat had had to go down uh, the rear end first. It sunk because everything had went up, up inside the bow, up underneath the front, and it was kids' toys and baby toys and all of those things. And so they, 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 they got to digging, and they found the owner of that boat, and they said, we got your boat. We'd like to see. We'd like to meet you. They did not tell them it was running and driving boat. They just said, meet us down here at the lake, and it was a separate lake, not the lake where it went under, and they said, we're going to show you a boat. So they was out there meeting. They stand there talking around. While they're standing there talking, all of a sudden, they said, there's your boat right there, and it come putting up to the sand. And they said, 
we were, they thought it was going to bring an old rotten boat up on a trailer. Here comes it. They didn't even paint it. They buffed that thing back out, and it wasn't meant, but it was nice. And it pulled back up, and they could not believe it. So they got them back in. It took them for a ride in it again, and they said, now we got to know what the story is on this boat. And they said, you, they, and, and, and they began to cry, and they began to voice begin to quiver. And they said, that was a day I thought we was all going to die. And they said, we was out in the water and said, we was having a good time. And we went out between them rocks and went around the curve and went right into a storm that we had no idea was anywhere around. Waves four and five foot tall. A gale come out of nowhere. We turned and headed for the dock. And he said, I almost made it because it boat with them, them speed boats are very shallow to the water. And he said, a wave swamped the engine and cut us off. He said, everybody was heading ashore. He said, I said, I put life jackets. He said, I had a 16 month old baby a three-year-old and my wife, and he said, I was putting life jackets on everybody, and he's crying in tears. He's remembering 30 years back, Brother James, uh, the last time he's seen this boat, uh, and he said, he said, they was just driving by us. I was waving. I was screaming. A big sightseeing boat that was fine. The five-foot waves wasn't going to sink. It went right by us and said, we've called for help to come for you. We've called for the rescue boat, and he said, they're driving by. He said, they made the mistake of turning back around and coming by me, and he said, I threw a rope out there and wrapped it around the, the rail whether they wanted it or not and he said I took my kids and literally threw them up on the dock of that that that, uh, that, 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 that sightseeing boat I threw them over the rail and he said I threw my wife pushed her up there and he said about that time the rear end of that boat went under the water and he said as it started down I clambered and clawed and he said I launched myself off the front of that boat and landed right across that rail and broke ribs and everything else and he said that's a day tears down his eyes and that I thought we was going to die. And he said, I never dreamed. He said, we come back and look for it. We dove for it. He said, but where you found it was so far. The currents carried it so far away. We dove. He said, my brother was a diver. We tried to find it the next, when the storm went away and get it back up, you know, and, and everything. And 30 years, he thought he'd never see that boat again, much less ever ride in it. But you know what that old boy did that day? He got in that boat uh, and rode in that boat again. Hallelujah. Hey, but I want to preach to you for Lord to help me for a few minutes tonight on it'll still make music. Hallelujah. It will still make music. Uh, a bruised reed, uh, he will not break. Uh, amen. And a smoking flax, uh, he will not quench. Uh, I want to tell you, we serve a God tonight. Uh, you think that's something, Miss Betty, uh, that a man could pull a boat off the bottom of the water uh, and restore a motor and make it run again? Uh, amen. A man take a car sitting 30 years and get it to start and drive. I've always been amazed by a mechanic that would take a bucket of bolts out of the field, a rusted down car, and restore it to a glamorous antique. Amen. But I want to tell you about a Savior tonight. Amen. Most men that restore cars will only restore something that's rare. They'll only restore something of value. Amen. But nobody really cares. If there was a million of them made, I'm not going to try to restore that. I'll just go buy one over here. But could I tell you I serve a God tonight. Uh, amen. That's in the business uh, of taking men uh, whose lives are bruised, uh, who the world says they're worth nothing. Uh, that says, I believe that'll make music again. Hallelujah. Uh, I can restore that uh, until it becomes something uh, and it does something for me. Hallelujah. I want to preach to you tonight. Uh, amen. He's a savior uh, that won't break a bruised reed. You want to know why? Uh, because he'd rather make music. Uh, amen. Than break the reed. Hallelujah. Uh, he'd rather repair. Uh, amen. What's left? Glory to God. Uh, I said he'd rather turn it around uh, and do something special with your life. Uh, and if you're watching tonight or you're listening tonight uh, and the devil says you're beyond repair, uh, you'll never play the guitar again. Uh, you'll never sing again. Uh, you'll never shout again. Uh, you'll never do nothing for God again. Uh, I want to tell you to know the God I served. A uh, uh, Bruce Reed. Uh, he will not break. Hallelujah. Come on now. Just going to go out there and scrap it. Let's just clean up some trash, Brother Tyler. We'll just take a video of us getting this old boat off the bottom of the lake. But somewhere along the line, someone said, do you think this thing would ever run again? you think this thing would ever drive again? you think this thing could ever have life again? Could I preach to you tonight? 
Amen. That the devil will take a man to the bottom. The devil will take a woman to the bottom. I feel like I'm preaching to somebody tonight and they may not even be sitting in this room. They may be sitting on the couch crying. I'm telling you, but I'm preaching to my church that you and I can't give up on people. Amen. Too many times we're too quick. Amen. To grind the reed out. Amen. That bruised reed's never going to do nothing again. Amen. Who cares? Stomp it underfoot and break it off. And we give people up and we say they're too hard. They'll never be saved. They're never going to want to live this old time way. Amen. You're a good thing we're not Jesus, ain't it? Amen. Because I'm telling you, he never gives up like we do. Yes, there's a line you can cross. And yes, there's a mercy line that God has. But could I tell you today, he told us that we had to forgive our brother 70 times 7 in one day. And if he told us to do that, how much greater is his mercy tonight? How much larger is his grace in this place tonight? And I want to tell you what he said tonight. Amen. When you say it's worthless, uh, when we say it's a piece of trash uh, ready to be thrown away, uh, you know what he says? Uh, it'll still make music. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship God. Woo! Are y'all in the house tonight? By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For they there, they, they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mercy, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And they said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Amen. What is it, Brother Brent? Amen. A group of Israelis. Amen. That sinned against God and got carried down to Babylon. And they tried to sing the Lord's song. Amen. But they couldn't sing the Lord's song in a strange land. And they were overwhelmed with grief. They were overwhelmed with guilt of their sin. Amen. They overwhelmed with the tragedy of it all. I said they were overwhelmed with it all. But could I tell somebody tonight, amen, that after a while, amen, there was news. He says, you know what God said? Yeah, I'm going to let the enemy take you. I'm going to let the enemy punish you. I'm going to let the enemy deal with you because of your sin. Amen, but don't worry. I'm bringing you out of captivity one of these days. I'm turning it around one of these days. Oh, you are going to need to get that harp. Amen, down off the willow tree. I want to preach if God will help me tonight. And maybe tonight your harps are hanging. And maybe tonight your song ain't singing. Uh, and maybe tonight your strings seem rusty. Uh, hey, but I'm going to tell you God ain't going to give up on you uh, because of Bruce Reed. Uh, he will not break. Uh, he says that'll make music again. Uh, that'll sing again. Uh, that's going to shout again. Uh, I'm going to use that uh, one more time. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, Sister Shanna, you're going to sing again. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, yeah. You're going to make music again, praise the Lord. Been through a dark place, but it ain't going to stay that way. Oh, it ain't going to stay that way forever. Bruised, yeah. Don't feel like I'm making much music, Brother Brent. That's all right. A bruised reed, he will not break. And we don't even believe in ourselves. He still believes in us all y'all in here tonight. I said, when we don't even believe in ourselves, he believes in us, praise God. What did the prophet say? I'm not going to preach anymore in this name. I ain't going to say no more in this name. I ain't going to do I ain't saying nothing else. Uh, I'm empty. I'm broken. I've preached and ain't nobody listening. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, amen, I heard him say it was like a fire shut up in my bones. Uh, and he got the pen out again. Uh, how about the psalmist David in Psalms 51? Uh, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit, oh God. Uh, amen. I'll never write another psalm. Uh, I'll never pick up another pen. Uh, amen. My writing days is over. Uh, I've, I've committed adultery. Uh, amen. I want to tell you it wasn't the last psalm he ever wrote uh, and it wasn't that not only did he write more psalms uh, but he wrote some beautiful psalms somebody shout glory uh, and could I tell somebody tonight that may be down uh, could I tell somebody tonight that's saying God are you going to use me uh, God are you going to help me uh, is there any hope for me uh, I just want you to know what he says tonight uh, you're going to make music again hallelujah uh, uh, y'all ain't helping me preach uh, I said he says you're going to make music again uh, amen because of Bruce Reed uh, he will not break hallelujah Woo! It's 
snuff it out. The second part said, Sister Brandy, he said, a smoking flax, he will not quench. Does anybody know what that means? Has anybody ever seen an old candle? And we, we would call it a wick, okay? But they didn't call it a wick. They used that flax put down in that oil. And when the oil had run dry or the wick had burnt low, it didn't just do nothing but smoke. Well, if you know anything about smoke, I like fire and I like light, but I don't like smoke in the house. Huh? Just recently, my damper messed up, and you would turn that damper on that wood stove straight up and down, and you could hear it rattling in there, and it was still flopped over, and smoke's pouring out the door. That stuff stinking, get in the basement and everything else. I don't like smoke. I like fire. Are you hearing me? Huh? And so you know what you did when the oil's out? Huh? They reached down and snuffed that out. Huh? Amen. Put some over top of that. Get that smoke out of the house. Huh? And when that happens, huh, it means you're done. You're, you're not worth anything anymore again. Huh? This, what, this is what he's trying trying to tell us here. Uh, the oil's burn out. Uh, the flax is done. Uh, it's done. It's all burnt down. Uh, hey, but he will not quench it. Uh, hey, man, you know why? Uh, with a bruised reed, that's nothing else for me or you to do but crush it because we can't fix it. Uh, the smoking flax is done. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what he does. Uh, he pours in some more oil. Hallelujah. Uh, I said he pours in some more oil. Uh, hey, man, I'm preaching on he'll make music again. Uh, he'll make light again. Uh, I wish I could preach tonight up in this house. Uh, hey, Amen, you's about done. Huh? You just felt like you're smoking. Huh? Amen, that's all you was when you came here, boy. Huh? Amen, there wasn't no even hardly a flame left. Huh? Just a little smoke. Huh? Amen, and a bruised reed. Huh? But you know what the Holy Ghost said? Huh? He'll make music again. Hallelujah. Huh? He'll make music again. Huh? She'll make music again. Huh? Come, my son, my Mahaya. Huh? Amen, and in a good Holy Ghost service, huh? he poured some oil back in your vessel. Huh? He healed that bruised spot, huh? and the music flowed again uh, and the anointing all flowed again uh, and the presence of God uh, amen come down again uh, one more time on somebody's soul uh, why uh, because a bruised reed uh, he will not break uh, and a smoking flax uh, he will not quench uh, magnify the Lord in this house tonight Woo! you know could I tell y'all that sometimes, even as a pastor, you find yourself down and you just don't feel like you, am I ever going to get anointed to preach again? Is anybody ever going to get saved again? Are we going to have revival again? Huh? And even as a pastor, brother, Matthew coming into church sometimes, you just feel like I'm just smoking, that's all. Ain't no real fire. Just a little smoke of what used to be. Hello, living on memories. Is anybody in the house tonight? Oh, don't feel like much music is coming out. Uh, and what is coming out is way off tune. Uh, and things ain't just right. Why? Because we got a bruised reed on our hand. Uh, hey, man, the oil's run low. Uh, the flax is just smoking. Uh, oh, but I'm so glad that God ain't like others. Uh, and even for the preacher and the pastor, uh, he says, hold on, preacher man. Uh, I'll put some oil back in you. I'll make you want to preach again. I'll put a joy back in you again. I'm trying to preach to somebody. I don't know if I'm helping anybody in this sanctuary tonight, but I'm trying to tell somebody in this church, amen, that God wants to put all in you, and God wants to fix you, and God wants to heal what's bruising. I'm feeling better than you're feeling right now, and God wants to anoint you one more time, and God wants to use you one more time, and God wants to take you places one more time. Get that harp down off the willow tree. I said, get that harp down off the willow tree. Amen. And strum down on that thing one time. Because God wants to make music through your life. One more time. Give God the praise in this sanctuary tonight. Woo! I've been praying two or three things lately in my prayer life. Number one, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. You seek a closer walk and let God take care of the rest. Huh? Number two, I have been praying the prayer that I have preached to you, and just for the fun of it tonight, I'll read it to you, huh? 
Are you here? Oh, hold on just a second. This wasn't in my notes. I got to pull it up here quickly. Oh, hallelujah. Will it make music again? Huh? Will it play again? Uh, if I've got to fix it, it ain't going to do nothing. Huh? If I've got to work on this thing, it ain't going to do nothing. But I know someone who says, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you do that. I know that one that say, throw that vacuum in the trash can, Brother Isaac. Huh? But Isaac said, no, let me have that vacuum cleaner. I'll make that thing suck things off the floor again. Are you here? I'll make that ruin. I'll make that thing go round and round and make the floors clean again. Uh, whoa, hold on. Uh, just throw that thing in the trash can. Uh, but Isaac said, no, uh, I love to try to make old broken vacuums work again. But it ain't worth nothing. Uh, yeah, but just to hear it run. Uh, when you said it wouldn't, that just blesses me. Uh, and could I tell you I serve a God, uh, amen, who just loves to see things work again. Uh, but the devil said never work again. Woo! Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, but it's worthless. Uh, it ain't even worth spending no time on. Uh, oh, yeah, put it in my hand. Uh, put it in the hands. Uh, that can heal that which is bruised. Uh, I'm going to make music out of that again. Uh, I'm going to make music out of that again. Uh, I'm going to make that sing one more time. Uh, hey, remember, they don't shout no more. Yeah, but it's going to shout again. Uh, when I get done fixing it, uh, it's going to shout again. Uh, when I get done fixing it, it's going to play the guitar again. Uh, when I get done fixing it, uh, it's going to run the house again. Uh, when I get done fixing it, uh, hey man, it's going to be a family again. Uh, when I get done fixing it, uh, they ain't going to be hopeless anymore uh, because I'm the man uh, that won't allow you to break a bruised reed uh, because I'll make it make music uh, all over again. <laughs> Woo! There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is common among men, a man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor. Now, he just don't have money. He's got a good name. Well, money ain't everything. Well, he's got more than money. He's got honor. He hadn't been a crook. He hadn't been a, he'd just been a good guy that worked hard. But so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth it. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. Are you listening to me? And I've been praying, God, give me power to enjoy what you have given me. Are y'all here? Power to enjoy. I don't have the riches, the wealth, or the honor, praise God. But I've got a lot of good things in my life. One of the things I got, Brother Johnny, is a good wife right there. That's a good wife. I got a great wife. Brother High, another thing I got is three wonderful children. Hey, four, and, and I will just say four wonderful children. I was going to say one other, but we'll say four wonderful children. Hey, man, that God has given me. Not one of them strung out. Not one of them's out there. Both my boys are still married to their first wife. And I don't, not knocking anybody that's in, you know. Hey, but I got two grandsons. That's awesome. Uh, are you listening to me? Uh, God, I'd like to have power to enjoy this. Huh? Woo! I've got a few old good cars. I got an old boat out the house, an old camper. Uh, I got a nice place out there on 30 acres. Uh, and yes, when you drive to my place, you got to drive through a little bit to get to it. Uh, amen. Sanford and Sons lives all around me. Uh, amen. But when we get out there, I got 30 acres that God gave me. Uh, I paid enough. Well, I ain't going to tell you what I paid for it. I a, a certain amount. Uh, the gas company come through uh, and gave me back every dime I paid for it. Uh, amen. To put a right, a right away through it. Uh, I still own the gas line right away. They just got a right away and they paid for the 30 acres that God had already almost gave me uh, so I don't even have a dime in the 30 acres are y'all listening to me uh, what are you saying brother Brent uh, but the devil wants you to be stressed out y'all ain't going to help me are you uh, well you just go home grouchy if you want to uh, I'm going to preach anyhow uh, amen but the devil wants us to be stressed out uh, my God there's people in this town sleeping under bridges uh, there's people in this town that ain't got food to eat uh, there's people in this town got real problems uh, and I'm not going to try to say there ain't a 
few in here got some real problems uh, and then there's others that's just allow the devil uh, to take life's problems in your life uh, and cause you not to be able to enjoy anything uh, that God has given you. Uh, but I ask God, Lord, would you grant me one thing? Uh, I'd like to make a little music. Uh, I feel the Holy Ghost of preaching y'all ready to go home. Uh, I said I'd like to make a little music, son. Uh, I don't want to be down all the time. Uh, I don't want to be stressed out all the time. Uh, I don't want to dread God to feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, I said I'd like to make a little music uh, in my ministry, Brother James. Uh, I'd like to have some power uh, to enjoy what God has given me. <laughs> Woo! I've been bruised, Brother Isaac. I have. I've been bruised in such a way that I felt like I was just ready to be crushed. Just stomp me out. I've been to a place where I wasn't doing nothing but smoking. Just snuff it out. It don't matter. But I'm glad that I serve a God. Now, whoa, whoa, don't you touch that. You let me have that. That's going to make music again. That's going to make light again. That's going to make warmth again. Are you here? Oh, Sister Brandy. Oh, yeah. A bruised reed he will not break. Brother Justin, a bruised reed he will not break. How many times did you give up on your own self? Huh? How many times did you allow the devil to tell you why you even keep trying? You're just broken. ain't nothing. Huh? But aren't you glad that God just keeps working on us? And he doesn't throw us in the trash pile and stomp us out and say, you're right. But he pours a little oil. He smooths that bruised part. And he makes music and light out of our lives again. Stand all over the house tonight. Have you ever been around someone? I just felt the Holy Ghost speak to me and read this again. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun. It is common among men. A man to whom God hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity. It's an evil disease. You know what's sad? There's people in this church that want their marriage to be healed. There's people in this church that want God to touch their marriage, but they're not getting any cooperation on the other side. But there are some in this church that don't want your marriage to get any better. You don't want it to be healed. You're not going to change come hell or high water. They can take you or leave it. I got a little kickback on that. Do we need to say it again? When you hit a stump, you back up and hit it again. Some people don't want it. And God could heal some of your marriages, but you don't care. You don't want to be a better man. You don't want to be a better wife. You could have a great life. And some of you will die miserable because you won't allow God to heal what's bruised. I don't want everybody shout. It wants to leave room for others. Well, James, there are things in your life that are very sad. There's nothing happy about them at all. But I'm glad every time the Lord gives you an opportunity, enjoy what you do have. Huh? You hear me? I'm going to tell you, there's some things that in your life, in your wife's life, is tragic. They're just sad. There's no good way to put it. But you know what I'm saying, Brother James? God will make music in your life. He'll put a smile on your face. If you'll say, Lord, I want power to enjoy. I don't want to be depressed all the time. I don't want to be down all the time. You might, you might, as I've been preaching, we might have an excuse. I got a reason. Not huh? what I preached to you Sunday morning. But I don't want to. I don't want to be grouchy all the time. I want to make music. Woo! And 
And I promise you that every person in this place can be happy in spite of whatever you're going through. If you'll say, Lord, take his bruised reed. Don't throw me away. Make music for me. Horatio Spafford going over the spot where his wife and daughter perished in the deep sea. And the captain says, right here is where your wife and daughter died. Picked up his pen and wrote, when peace like a river attendeth my way, or when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Now you listen to Brother Brent. Every one of us, I've, I've told you, start with me. Every one of us get bruised. Every one of us get down. And that's okay. I'm not kicking you for being down. They're not kicking you while you're down. But I'm telling you, we serve a God. And we don't have to stay down unless we just want to. How many thanks, Brother Ronnie? Has a lot more than a cologne. He's got a lot of joy, don't he? How many times you had cancer, Brother Ronnie? Several times. A large part of his inside's gone. One lung's gone. Woo! Uh-oh, come on now. Huh? He walks in here with the biggest smile on his face. Grabs me and give me, he ain't been one service. He doesn't come and grab me and hug me. I'm going to say this discreetly. I'm not even going to tell you. He's, carry, he's carrying physical ailments on his body. He's had irreversible surgeries. Some surgeries they can do and then reverse them later. Too much has been cut out. Too much, it's irreversible. He's getting shots in his eyeball, for, just like Brother Brent is for cancer. Are you here? He lives up here in a little apartment by himself, and his sister comes and checks on him. Hey, man, he, he may have a lot of money. I don't I ain't figured that out yet. He ain't told me. But, but I was going to say he ain't got no money, but he might fool me. But you know what? He rolls Rolls up in that little car, runs up in this joint, 80 years old, uh, done beat cancer. I don't know how many times cancer in his eye. One lung's gone. Half his intestines are gone. Uh, he's carrying ailments right here. He's facing things right now. Amen. What, what is it? What is he? He's not any different than anybody else in this building. You know what he's decided? Uh, I'm going to make music uh, out of this bruise reed. I'm about to preach in this house. It's time to quit. <laughs> Woo! My God, and I go home and lay in the bed and say, God, I can't get up. I can't make it. I can't hold on. I ought to be ashamed of myself, Sister Crystal, with all the blessing God's gave me. I can shout every service just because my children are saved. I said, I can shout every service. And you say, well, mine ain't saved. Well, guess what? You can shout every service because you're saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you shouldn't have been. And you shouldn't have been in hell. Great God, help me to preach in this house tonight. I'm here to Tell you, Bruce Reed, he will not break. He wants you to make music out of your life again. Lift your hands and worship God in this sanctuary. Woo! Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Give me power to enjoy, God, what you have given me. Son, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. And we're coming to pray. You just moved into a beautiful home. You hear me? I don't want one ounce of stress over the payment. I don't want that one ounce of stress. Don't talk to your wife about selling it. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I want you to go in that house and enjoy it. You hear me? Because God gave it to you. You worked hard. You've gave hard. You've gave to God, and God's gave it to you. Now go enjoy it. Every payment's going to be made. The money's going to come in. Somebody shout glory. Devil trying to stress me out about this street store. Everybody's going to fight. The church is going to split. This is going to happen. You're not going to do it. It's going to go under. Hey, man, I'm telling you. Hey, man, some things are stirring down in my soul, Brother Jeremiah. And I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I'm afraid he's afraid what good's going to come out of it. So he wants to take the song away. He wants to make everything a job. Hey, man, oh, hallelujah. Hey, man, but God gave us a church. I say, let's enjoy it. God gave us health. Let's enjoy it. 
said, uh, we're here tonight. Man, it's time to quit, Brother James. Uh, I'd like to see God get on you tonight. You took a lap around this church, uh, not because everything in your life is perfect, uh, but because God, uh, amen, blows across the strings, uh, and God blows across it. Uh, and says, how about a little music, Brother James, out of you tonight? Uh, amen, I'll touch this. Uh, I'll take this bruised reed, uh, and I'll make something beautiful uh, come out of your life. Uh, I got to quit. Woo. Hallelujah. Anybody feel like praying? I'll play for you, Brother Eddie. I know you worked all day. Amen. I'll pray. Come on. Let's fill these altars tonight. Hallelujah. Let's ask God to give us power to enjoy. Let's ask God to bring something beautiful out of that which is broken. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.